So what was the thought process when very soon, I think, after graduating from high school, you pack up your car and head across the country to L.A.? And then in your mind, what would, what would make it worth sticking around? What was sort of the criteria that you were going to judge your, your success or failure by in that initial period? If I had thought that way at that you know, at 17, I would, have, I would have been doing different things. I just wasn't that smart. I, thought, I sort of thought, this will be fun. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anyone who had any success at all in, in TV or film. And I, a friend, uh, my best friend in high school, we packed up the car and told my mother I wasn't going to college and broke her heart and then uh, <laughs> and drove to LA, which took us about three months in and of itself because we just <laughs> went like this. Right. and. Uh, and then um, I got out there, and I, these details can't possibly be no, interesting to come a on, theater full on, of people. On, I can't. Uh, OK. Uh, um, so we got out there, and I looked for, um, we, got, we lived in Eagle Rock, which we thought was Los Angeles. And, uh, <laughs> and um, we, I got a job as a busboy, because I wasn't old enough to serve liquor as a waiter. I wasn't 18 yet. And, um, and I went to about a handful of auditions. I think it was only for Saved by the Bell episodes. And uh, <laughs> then I was going to go. I didn't get any work. And I was going to go back east and do something else, go to school. And, um, and I got an audition. I was literally packed. And I was leaving the, our apartment. We were all sort of, everyone was clearing out. And I had an audition for Gus Van Sant's Today for Howard Fuhrer, who was the casting director, who has since passed away. But he was... Uh, cast a lot of great movies, and I met with him six times. Um, and I thought, like, will this ever end? Uh, <laughs> I thought you went to an audition, and then you got it, or you didn't get it. I didn't really, because I'd never had a callback. Right. So I didn't know that it went on past <laughs> one. And uh, I would just go sit with our viewer, and he would ask me. That was back when you could smoke in offices. This was a 1,000 years ago. <laughs> and he would just sit there smoking, and he'd say, can you do this? And I was like, I drove all the way over here, and he asked me if I can do this. Um, and then he put me in a room with Gus Van Sant, um, who I, I read it for him once. And um, he said, oh, you've prepared it. And I said, well, yeah, it's been about you know, a month in the, getting into this room with you. And he said, can you do it in a way that you haven't prepared it? And so I just tried to do it differently. That was the only, that was the only direction, was not the way you're doing it now. Right. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I did it differently, and then um, he took my picture, uh, which is something that he does in every audition, or used to do, and then, um, and then I got that job. And then so, um, I have no idea what your question was, no, but I went that's... from, <laughs> that was where... That, you're, you're on track, so... I, yes. Okay. So, uh, so you get that job, and yeah. that, is the, that was the beginning of not only a, a long and important relationship with Gus, which we'll get to why it was important, but also Joaquin Phoenix, I guess, mm -hmm. became out of that. You're, you met him on that and mm -hmm. became very close. And, um, and obviously a great movie, but when, when that movie came out and I, I, you know, it was well received, rather than trying to parlay that into the next great role or, or whatever, what did you do? Uh, I went to school. I went to... Um but first, I should say that when I, this is how it, uh, not that long ago, people had different attitudes about certain things I was going to do to die for. And there were more than a few people said, you should be really careful uh, with on that movie. Um, did you know that Gus is gay? And I thought, I'm not even sure what relevance that has to anything. Um, and... You know, I had seen his movie, which was absolutely, I, I, you know, he, he was sort of famous in 1989. There was this explosion of independent movies, and it was like Spike Lee and Steven Soderbergh and Gus Van Sant, and they all had movies at Sundance that year. And it was kind of the birth of that era of independent movies and, um, and uh, a few other people. And someone had written a book about it called Spike Mike Slackers and Dykes, I yeah, think, yeah. Uh, which was all I knew about that world. And... and um, I read that movie, and I, I knew um, Drugstore Cowboy was Gus's movie, and I just loved it. And, um, and so I went and did that, and I became very close with Gus, and um, it's still a close friend of mine, and um, it's, it has been, as you said, an important relationship. And 
Uh, he's been both like a very, very dear, one of my closest friends and also a kind of mentor. And he's, he's asked me to, I edited on uh, one of his movies and I, um, you know, he's just included me in a million ways and in that we, he lived in the same apartment building as I did I, uh, in New York. And um, he would show, he was shooting with, uh, doing a movie with Harris Savitas, who was one of the great, also passed away, but one of our best cinematographers ever. And he, they would come down, Gus said, oh, I don't have a TV in my space, can we use your TV? Which may, I, um, I think was just an excuse to try to include me. And, and he said, we're gonna come down and I'm gonna show Harris movies and we're gonna talk about how we want our movie to look. And so um, he did that. And so it was this kind of free film school with these guys. I would just sit and listen to them 